In previous videos on this topic, we built a boundary between two halves of a mirrored seat in order to get a smooth blend between the two, get a perfectly symmetrical object at the same time. As a general rule, when we use this technique and cut out a center section that will be patched together with this bridging boundary, it's best to try to make this zone as narrow as possible to try to preserve the original design intent as expressed by the layout sketches. So in the original or previous videos, this zone was only 10 millimeters wide. Occasionally you'll find situations where you need to make this zone wider in order to give enough distance for a good blend to occur. This can occur when the boundaries on either side of this blending boundary are very complicated or if this blending boundary has to make some strange transitions, say from convex in this area to concave in this area, it requires enough room in order to make a nice smooth transition without any strange pinches. For this tutorial I've contrived a situation where we've decided to make this blending boundary 20 millimeters wide instead of 10 millimeters wide. I'm going to demonstrate what can happen under these circumstances. Here we already have the two halves of the seat mirrored over with a 20 millimeter swath taken out of the middle and already have a copied profile on the front plane, which is the mirror plane. Just like before, we'll do a boundary from this face, this profile, and this face. I'll set the faces at curvature to face. So let's compare this new boundary to the shapes of our original layout sketches. Because the new boundary included a profile that was copied from the front seat layout, we can see from the front view that the boundary nicely follows that layout. So we know that our original design intent has been preserved all along the length of this boundary when viewed from the front. Viewed from the top, however, we see a slightly different situation it's not severe, but we can see that this was the original curve of the top layout sketch. Here we see the new curve of this edge of the boundary does not match. Problem is that when this boundary is being created, there is nothing controlling the shape of this edge as it proceeds from this point to this point to this point. When this cutout swath was very narrow, the discrepancy was small, but the wider this swath gets, the greater the discrepancy is going to be between the edge of the boundary and the original edge of the layout. What this suggests then is that we need some sort of a guide curve that's going to start at this point and wrap all the way to this point that's going to control the shape of that edge, and that guide curve obviously would have to be controlled by the top layout sketch and the front layout sketch. This means we need a guide curve made not only for the nose of the seat, but also one for the tail where the discrepancy is also going to occur. The starter file that's been supplied with this tutorial already contains the original boundary, the mirror image, the slot cut out of the middle, a profile copied on the front plane that will be used for the boundary, and it already has a guide curve made at the nose that was created by projecting the bottom edge of the front layout sketch and a portion of the nose area of the top layout sketch. Your task in this tutorial will be to recreate this process or the tail end of the seat and then use all the pieces to again make a boundary and then modifying it with these guide curves at the nose and the tail. I've made the top layout sketch visible and I'm going to make a new sketch on the top plane and copy this entire contour from the top layout. Now we only need this portion in the tail. 
theoretically we can grab this point and drag it along its original contour all the way back to this point and make a coincident relation. If I do that, sometimes it will work and other times it gets very tricky as I'm dragging this along. It'll sometimes dart to other parts of the profile. A trick here is just to trim this spline back to somewhere in this vicinity and then go ahead and take that endpoint and drag it to where it's needed. So I'll just draw an arbitrary line across here. Use the trim tool. Trim this away and now I have much better control over this point because it's in the vicinity of where I want it to be. And what I want to do is make a coincident relation. Let me get rid of that one. Make a coincident relation between this point and this point. But when I do, I get an overdefined situation. Let's go ahead and delete that. The problem is this point is constrained to move along a predefined path. So dragging it in the x direction automatically defines where it is in the z direction. So if we give it a coincident relation to this point, it's giving us both an x and a y location and a position along a path, which is three pieces of information when only two are needed. So instead what we will do is just simply give a vertical relation between this point and this point, which will define the horizontal position, but because it's constrained to move on this path, it automatically defines this vertical position in the z direction at the same time. You see that does not overdefine, and even though it's not a coincident, theoretically it will be coincident because of its constraint on this path and the fact that this boundary was originally made using the same path from the top layout sketch as well. So to recap here, use a vertical relation instead of a coincident relation at this point. A horizontal relation will probably work just as well. I'll zoom in out a little bit here. Now what I'm going to do is draw a center line. This is located on the front plane. I'm just going to go ahead and mirror this line, so this will give us our path from this half of the seat all the way to this half of the seat when viewed from the top view. I'll go ahead and finish this sketch. Now what we need to do is copy the bottom line from the front layout under the front plane and project that sketch with the sketch that we just completed. So on the front plane, I'm going to copy this line. You'll be tempted to think that we need to do the same thing where we need to drag this point all the way back into the vicinity of the seat. But when we project this sketch with this sketch, what's going to govern the overall length of the projected sketch is whichever of the two sketches is the shortest. So the fact that this sketch is longer and this sketch just means that we're going to have extra sketch here, which isn't going to do anything. So I'm now going to project this sketch with this sketch using insert, curve, projected. We see the limits of this projected sketch are being controlled by the limits of this shorter sketch. So even though this sketch goes out further, the projected sketch can only go as far as these points on this much shorter sketch. So here's our projected sketch going from this point to this point and passing through the front plane at this point. I'll make the center profile visible again. And now we are ready to do our boundary finally. face, profile, face, and this time in direction 2 we are going to include guide curves that we didn't have before. Guide curve at the nose, guide curve at the tail. We have to remember to go back into the direction 1 box and control curvature at each of the faces
And for good measure, I'm going to make the boundary normal to profile where it passes through this sketch. Now let's look at the front view of the seat. We'll highlight the front layout and we see the boundary matches the front layout like before. This is what we expected. We'll now take a look at the top view. And now we see that the contour of this boundary also matches the contour of the original top layout sketch. Turning on our zebra stripes, we see a nice blend across the join lines. So from your viewpoint, the steps you just created were step 8 and 9, copying the tail portion and this bottom portion of the layout sketches, step 10 to create a projected curve, and then step 11, taking all the pieces, putting them together to create the boundary. The last two steps of this tutorial are just like before, shelling the bottom and adding a fillet along the edges.